Universal Soil Loss Equation Modeling Erosion It is very difficult to measure soil loss from a large area. Landscape measurements are limited due to practical constraints. Building a comprehensive unbiased data can take a very long time. You need to take continuous measurements of soil loss. So long term measurements are necessary to assess erosion responses to land use and climate changes. For certain climate the soil loss may be different. In certain months the soil loss may be quite high. It also depends on the type of land use. If the land is under dense vegetation, the soil loss may be less. So you need to take continuous measurement in order to understand that area and understand the process of soil erosion in that area. Models can predict erosion across various conditions. Most erosion models are empirical. Of course, there is potential for more mechanistic models as our understanding of erosion processes has advanced. Universal Soil Loss Equation This equation can be used to predict the soil loss. It will primarily estimate the loss which occurs from sheet erosion and rill erosion. It is an empirical model. It will estimate the annual average rate of soil erosion for a given combination of crop system, management practice, soil type, rainfall pattern and topography. It takes into consideration all these factors. However, this equation is not quite suitable for predicting the gully erosion as it does not explicitly account for the processes that lead to the formation of gullies. Let us learn a bit more about the universal soil loss equation. It is an erosion prediction model for estimating long term averages of soil erosion from sheet and drill erosions from a specified land under specified conditions. So it may predict the erosion per year. How many tons of soil could be lost per hectare from sheet erosion and rill erosion for a specific land which is under specific condition. Now for development of this equation uh, data from more than 250,000 runoff events at 48 different research stations across 26 states during 40 years were taken into consideration. So a lot of work uh, was done to form this equation by Vishmer and Smith. So erosion is a function of climate, soil, topography and land use. Climate basically rainfall if the rainfall is heavy we can expect heavier soil loss it depends on type of soil also texture structure now uh, if the soil is quite loose obviously the erosion will be more it depends on type of topography also if it's a sloping land we can expect the runoff to travel at a faster rate it will detach particles and it will start transporting these soil particles and land use also at different times of the year, uh, the land may be under different conditions. It may be barren for some months. It may be under dense vegetation for some months. It also depends on the type of crop that is grown on the land. So erosion is a function of climate, soil topography and land use. Universal soil loss equation is the most widely accepted method for estimating the average annual soil loss. It also helps in determining the adequacy of conservation measures. For example, if you have used some burns or terraces, or row crops, how effective are these conservation measures? Okay, So you can estimate the soil loss under a particular condition using universal soil loss equation. So this is the universal soil loss equation provided by Wishmer and Smith in 1978. A is equal to R K L S C P where A is the average annual soil loss. 
that is say it is in tons per hectare r is the rainfall erosivity index it is related to the ability of rain to erode the soil so the unit mega joule millimeter per hectare hour k is the soil erodibility index the susceptibility of soil to get eroded how vulnerable the soil is uh, to erosion so unit it is ton hectare hour per uh, hectare mega joules millimeter then ls together is known as the topographic factor uh, l is the length of slope s is the steepness of slope together it is known as topographic factor and c is the crop management factor and p is the conservation practice factor so in this chapter we will learn uh, how to estimate these indexes okay so let us start let us learn uh, this equation in detail a equal to r k l s c p what is r r is the rainfall erosivity index it can be computed by ei 30 or ke greater than 25 method e stands for energy i 30 stands for 30 minutes maximum intensity so in a rainfall event we have to find those 30 minutes in which the intensity was maximum and then there is another method kinetic energy greater than 25 so if the uh, rainfall intensity is more than 25 mm per hour we may consider that rainfall then next factor is the soil erodibility index k what is soil erodibility index it is the average soil loss for a particular soil in a fellow land with an arbitrarily selected slope length of 22.13 meters and slope steepness of 9% then we have the topographic factor ls it represents ratio of soil loss under given conditions to the soil loss at a site with slope steepness of 9% and slope length of 22.13 meters what is crop management factor it's a ratio comparing soil loss from land under specific crop and management system to the corresponding soil loss from a fellow land finally we have the conservation practice factor p this represents the ratio of soil loss by a support practice to that of straight row farming up and down the slope okay so uh this is r k l s c n p these factors make up the universal soil loss equation when these factors are multiplied we get the average annual soil loss usually it will be in tons per hectares rainfall erosivity index let us learn in a bit more detail about this factor r the best estimator of soil loss is a compound parameter the product of kinetic energy of the storm and the 30 minute maximum intensity occurring during the storm so we need to multiply that we need to multiply kinetic energy of storm by the 30 minutes maximum intensity that has occurred during the storm so that is a best estimator of soil loss so we can use ei 30 index method in which this is the equation Uh, kinetic energy e is equal to 0.119 plus 0.0873 multiplied by log of i i is the intensity this equation is applicable if the intensity is less than or equal to 76 mm per hour if the intensity is more than that 
then we need to directly write kinetic energy as 0.283 i30 is the maximum amount of rain which fell in 30 minutes and then it is to be converted into intensity in millimeter per hour so ei30 is the product of kinetic energy e and the intensity i30 and k greater than 25 index method can also be used to compute the rainfall erosivity index so the difference here is we will consider intensities that are more than 25 mm per hour will not be considering intensities which are less than this okay there is one chapter specifically dedicated to rainfall erosivity index and soil erodibility we will be learning in uh, detail about rainfall erosivity in that chapter we will be solving some problems uh, related to these indexes okay right now let us see the rainfall erosivity index map now in central india what is the average rainfall erosivity index it is somewhere in this range 881.74 in east and north east india it is 3312.39 in northwest india the average r value is 834.44 and in south peninsula it is 615.61 these are the r values for different uh, regions of india standard runoff plot here is a plot having length of 22.1 meters width of 4 meters and slope of 9% this plot is used in the estimation of soil erodibility index k this size was recommended by united states department of agriculture usda natural resources conservation service nrcs for use in the universal soil loss equation this plot should be equipped with appropriate instrumentation to measure runoff and sediment yield usually the runoff is collected in a tank and the amount of soil is also measured soil erodibility index k soil erodibility index k is the soil loss per unit rainfall erosivity index for a specified soil as measured on a unit plot which is 22.1 meter in length and having 9% uniform slope so this plot is 22.1 meters in length and it is having slope of 9% so the soil loss that occurs from this plot per unit rainfall erosivity index that is k k is determined by considering the soil loss from a fallow land without the influence of crop cover universal soil loss equation is a equal to r k l s c p if we write this in terms of k it will be k equal to a divided by r l s c p so from this we can define k so k is the average annual soil loss per r that is the rainfall erosivity index it's a fallow land the value of topographic factor will be equal to 1 and cnp will be nearly 1 so k will be equal to a divided by r for this kind of a plot so if you can measure the soil loss from this plot you can uh, estimate the soil erodibility index nomograph solution of k we can obtain k using a nomograph what's a nomograph it's a graph representing the relations between three or more variable quantities so arranged that the value of one variable can be found by a simple geometrical construction 
so what is required to calculate k by using a nomograph we may need these five variables we need percentage of silt plus percentage of very fine sand we will need percentage of sand percentage of organic matter soil structure and soil permeability so these will be provided in the graph we just need to join them to get the final approximation of soil erodibility index k now just for your information this is the textural classification of soils given by the united states department of agriculture you can see it ranges from gravel to clay gravel the range is greater than 2 mm while for clay it is less than 0.02 mm so the table has been provided for your information you can see silt is slightly uh, uh, bigger than clay it is having size from 0.02 to 0.05 mm then we have fine sand okay we have many uh types of sand here see very fine sand fine sand medium sand and uh, medium sand coarse sand and very coarse sand okay so in between silt and gravel we have five types of sand very fine sand the size ranges from 0.05 to 0.10 for fine sand the size ranges from 0.1 to 0.25 mm for medium sand it is 0.25 to 0.5 mm for coarse sand it is 0.5 to 1 mm for very coarse sand it is 1 to 2 mm and then finally gravel uh, size will be more than 2 mm structural class of soil there will be uh, several classes the important ones uh, are given in this table fine granular uh, medium blocky platy massive so these are the various structural classes of soil and the aggregate aggregate sizes are also provided in the table permeability classification so permeability relates to the rate at which water will pass through the soil now sandy to gravelly soil will have rapid permeability the water will quickly permeate whereas for uh, soils which are high in clay content you can see the range is quite slow okay here it is the permeability permeability class is 6 and range is very slow for Uh, soil with high clay content and poor aggregation it is moderate for loam and silty loam it is slow to moderate for clay loam sand silt it is slow for high clay content so these are the different classes these will be provided in the nomograph we just need to join one line to this class okay to understand the process of estimation of soil erodibility using nomograph let us solve this problem so a certain soil has following characteristics silt plus very fine sand percentage is 65 sand is 5% in that soil organic matter is 3% structure of the soil is fine granular permeability is slow to moderate okay now we need to estimate the soil erodibility index k using a nomograph now in this nomograph on the left side we have percentage silt plus very fine sand you can see on the left y axis now in the problem it is given to us that silt plus very fine sand is 65 so make a straight horizontal line from 65 and it will touch this wavy uh, lines this at uh, what is the percentage sand here 5% so here you can see okay this broken line represents 5% sand so from 65 to 5% 
then we are supposed to go perpendicular so make a straight line make a straight line that is vertical and it will go and uh, up to 3 because the organic matter content is 3% now again make a horizontal line here we get the first approximation it seems that it is somewhere around 0.04 so make a horizontal line and it will join line 2 okay it's a continuous line it is representing the fine granular structure of soil and then we'll make a line which is downwards a straight line downwards and it will join permeability class uh, i think what is the permeability class here it is slow to moderate yes it is slow to moderate so this will be class 4 slow to moderate so we have made this line and finally we need to make one horizontal line okay and this horizontal line will join the y axis which will give us the approximation of soil erodibility factor so when we make this line it gives us 0.04 okay so this is the value of soil erodibility index or soil erodibility factor k equal to 0.04 so alternatively we were going horizontal and vertical to get the estimation of k if you don't have information regarding the soil structure or permeability you can take this as the value of k this is the first approximation of k for that you will need percentage silt plus very fine sand percentage sand data and organic matter content of the soil so through the nomograph we have estimated the value of k topographic factor it's a combination of l and s l is the length of slope and s is the steepness of slope when these two factors are multiplied it is known as the topographic factor slope length is defined as the distance from the point of origin of overland flow to the point where slope decreases sufficiently for deposition to occur or to the point where runoff enters a defined channel so it is the length from point of origin of overland flow okay and to which point to the point where the slope has decreased sufficiently for deposition right or to the point where runoff enters a channel now slope gradient is the filled slope to estimate ls this equation has been provided to us now in this equation x is the length of slope x divided by 22.1 raised to m this exponent m should be equal to 0.5 if the slope is greater than 5% it should be taken as equal to 0.4 if the slope is less than or equal to 5% and greater than 3% problem calculate the topographic factor ls if the length of the slope is 30.5 meters and slope is 4% here is the equation slope length factor ls is equal to x divided by 22.1 raised to m in bracket 0.065 plus 0.0456 slope plus 0.00641 slope square now we'll be using the suitable exponents in this case the slope is 4% so what should be the value of m yes the value of m should be 0.4 okay if the slope is less than equal to 5% and greater than 3% we are supposed we are supposed to use the value of m as 0.4 crop management factor it is the ratio of soil loss from a crop land to the soil loss from a fallow land now the conditions should be identical crop management factor is the ratio of soil loss from land cropped under specified conditions to the corresponding soil loss from a fallow land under identical conditions uh, identical soil identical slope and rainfall
conditions so these conditions will differ significantly during crop growth period different conditions have been provided here period f to period 4 period f for fallow period 1 seed bed seeding up to 1 month then period 2 is the establishment period from 1 to 2 months after seeding period 3 is the growing period from 2 to the crop harvest okay uh, then uh, period 4 is from crop harvest to the new seed bed preparation average annual c factor uh has been provided here for different conditions bare soil for bare soil it is maximum c it is 1.00 okay for forest the erosion will be less okay so crop management factor is 0.001 it is quite less if the land is under savanna grass which is in good condition the c value is quite less 0.01 for overgrazed savanna it is more 0.10 because now the land is prone to erosion for maize sorghum millet with high productivity and conventional tillage you can see the value of c factor is 0.20 to 0.55 for maize sorghum millet with high productivity and minimum tillage value of c is 0.02 to 0.10 for cotton the value ranges from 0.40 to 0.70 similarly the average annual c factor for other crops have also been provided here conservation practice factor p p is the ratio of soil loss for a specific practice to the soil loss for up and down slope farming soil loss for up and down slope farming is maximum so the value is 1 if the conservation practice is contour farming the value will be less it is 0.68 for burns it is even lesser than contour farming it's 0.30 so these values have to be used in the universal soil loss equation some more values of conservation p factor have been provided here for contouring on 0 to 1 degree slope it is 0.60 for contouring on 12 to 14 degree slope the p factor value is 0.90 for level bench terraces it is 0.14 suitable p values can be chosen based on the erosion control practice some more c values and p values have been provided here for different crop types for c and for different uh, Uh, practices for p now let us solve one simple problem to estimate annual soil loss using the universal soil loss equation a equal to r k l s c p now the values of uh, these factors have been provided to us here okay rainfall erosivity index is 1400 megajoule millimeter by hectare hour year soil erodibility index is 0.2 ton hectare hour by hectare megajoule millimeter crop management factor that will be c that is 0.60 conservation practice factor p is 1 and slope length factor or you can say the topographic factor ls is 0.1 we simply need to substitute these values in the universal soil loss equation the average annual soil loss by this equation is the product of all these values and the answer is 16.8 tons per hectare estimate the average annual soil erosion along a along a 100 meter slope with a 6 degree incline cultivated with maize and featuring contour burns which are spaced 25 meters apart the average annual precipitation is 1263 mm the soil has silt plus very fine sand of 65% sand percentage is 5 organic matter is 2.8 percentage structure is uh, the structural class is 2 permeability class is 4 so these will be used in the nomograph to obtain the value of erodibility we have already done that in the previous slide 
Spacing of contour bands is 25 meters. The slope is given. It is 6 degrees. It is to be converted into percentage and then it will be substituted in the topographic factor equation. Okay. Now between January to April land is under dense secondary growth. Throughout the three month period spanning from May to July which includes seeding and harvest the vegetation cover is expected to fluctuate within these ranges. Let us see the range. In May it may vary from 9 to 45 percent. In June it is likely to range from 55 to 93 percent. In July, the cover may fluctuate between 45 and 57%. And in August to December, land is under dense cover similar to grass covered land. Conservation practice factor is contour bund. We are supposed to estimate the average annual soil erosion. Let us use the universal soil loss equation to compute the soil loss. Now, the first step is estimation of rainfall erosivity index r on substituting 1263 we will get the annual erosivity as 28.82 megajoules per hectare so we will be multiplying the mean annual erosivity by the 30 minute maximum intensity so r is equal to 28.82 multiplied by 75 so our answer will be 2161.5 megajoules millimeter per hectare hour. Step 2. Estimate the soil erodibility index. In this nomograph, there is percentage silt plus very fine sand, percentage sand, percentage organic matter, soil structural class and permeability class. So values of uh, these uh, parameters are already available with us. So we will just join the lines. We have already done this actually. So upon joining them, we have to go alternatively horizontal and then vertical, then again horizontal. So when you make these straight lines and join the values, we will get the value of K which is equal to 0 0.04 turn hectare R by hectare megajoule millimeter. So this is the value of soil erodibility index. If you want to learn this in detail, go to the previous slide and, uh, 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 and see how these lines were made. Okay, We have actually completed this. Okay, So K is 0 0.04. Step 3. Estimation of topographic factor LS. Now the value of slope was slope length was given to us. X is 25 meter. Okay. Uh, and then the slope is given in degrees which is equivalent to 11%. 6 degree is equivalent to 11% of slope. And because the slope is in excess of 5%, we will be using the exponent value of m as 0 0.5. So let us substitute the values. x will be equal to 25 and then m will be equal to 0 0.5. Upon substituting the values, we will get the estimation of topographic factor. ls is equal to 1.44. Step 4 estimation of crop management factor from standard tables you can choose the most appropriate value of c in this case it will vary from month to month let us see uh, yeah from january to april the conditions are similar it's very dense vegetation growth take c value of dense shrub from the table you can take the c value it is 0 0.001 so for uh, from January to April, we are taking C value as 0 0.001. Now it will vary for the next three months. Okay. Adjustment factor percentage R value is 0 0.10 and weighted C value which is uh, column 3 multiplied by column 4 will be equal to 0 0.0001.
May Mays will be covering around uh, uh, 9% to 45%. Okay, so the corresponding C value has been written here. The adjustment factor that is percentage R value has also been written here 0.05 and when we multiply we get 0.045. So all these C values have been appropriately multiplied and we have got this answer which is 0 0.4301. This is the summation of the C values. Next step 5 estimation of conservation practice factor p value for contour burns is 0 0.3 directly we will use this p value and finally we will use the universal soil loss equation a equal to r k l s c p substitute the values and uh, on multiplying these values we get the average annual soil loss in tons per hectare our answer is 16.06 tons per hectare.